This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbil Mac, a better wood planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? Today we're gonna test yet another pickup truck. I'm still not done with pickup trucks. I need to test the Suzuki D Max electric also, but uh, this time it's going to be a Korean pickup truck. This is KGM Musso EV. It's based on the same uh, platform as the KGM uh, uh, Torres EVX. And at least the importer RSA build, they just say that this is like an SUV with uh, a bed behind it. But they still build it kind of like a pickup truck. But okay, so like from here, you, it seems like an SUV, but then, oh, it's a pickup truck. <laughs> the bed is not that big though. But um, this is a lot cheaper than the Maxus e Terra 9 that costs around 750k nook. This is only 470k, but then the battery is smaller. Uh, in the Maxus is uh, over 100 kilowatt hour, I believe around 105 kilowatt hour. Here it's only around 83 kilowatt hour and it's LFP. So, okay. So I haven't figured out how to open the bed yet. There's a bed cover. I'm going to figure out later. I'm running out of time today. But we actually have okay space in the back here. Five seat. Well, easy fix here. Okay, leg room. And then the front. Yeah, okay. It beeps at you like a freaking Asian car. All right. So I, I actually drove from... Uh, drum and to here and started the test i started measuring the battery capacity and then oh yeah we have car scanner working so we can see state of charge we can see the voltage um, current battery power also how much energy is remaining also battery temperature and then some other stuff here 12 volt <laughs> how hot the 12 volt is charge port temp and then the max yeah since this is lfp then Voltage is not gonna change much, but huh? Is it actually 3.3 .3 volts? Wow, this is kind of low voltage for cell voltage for LFP. Well, okay, or maybe it is normal. Okay, but uh, you guys know the drill. We're gonna drive the regular route. We're gonna reset one on the drip meter, and then off we go. All right, we're doing the 120 test first. We have to cruise 122 on the speedo to match 120 GPS speed. And then winter is finally here. It's one degree Celsius outside. Ooh. Uh, consumption right now is 406 watt hour per kilometer. The strange thing is that uh, we have 61% battery left and then we're only gonna drive uh, yeah, 16 kilometers to the turnaround point. And the car says, well, we won't make it there. Uh, do we want to find a charging spot? Huh? What the heck, man? But the noise and comfort level here is quite good for a poor man's pickup truck, you know, that costs a lot less than the Maxus, then I'm really impressed. You can hear it's nice and quiet in here. And also the suspension has been tuned that it's still comfy, even though we don't have any load in the back. For example, the Maxus ET90, the previous generation Maxus, it was horrible. It was noisy. The, the suspension was quite harsh because uh, we had empty bed. Uh, it's tuned for full load. But here, you can actually use it as a regular car, like Thai people use it. <laughs> um, or you can just go um, uh, working somewhere, right? That's what they want to use it for. Oh, it's interesting. This shows you the speed of speed, right? But the map here shows you the GPS speed. Huh. Very nice and useful. And well, we are back. The consumption was 359 watt hour per kilometer. And then uh, when I was writing down the numbers, then it ticked up to 360. So it counts when we are stationary. But that is actually the same as the Moxus e Terra 9 at 120. But then it was a lot warmer. So, hmm, well, but this e Terra, no, no, this Musso is smaller than the e Terra. So maybe that makes sense. Well, on the move again, 90, GPS speed, 92, speedo speed. We have um, auto steer and auto lane change. You know, the symbols here are really similar to the Kia and Hyundai, even though they are not uh, associated as far as I know. And not only that, but uh, you can turn off cruise control like this. 
and you can still use auto stare individually and there's a button for it, disabling auto stare well, I guess the Koreans they are uh, similar right and just like the toilets uh, the infotainment here is kind of weird because uh, where's the clock here it's Weisnish where's the clock here there's no clock well you can go home and then you see yeah 2 15 p.m. and no matter where I look in the settings I cannot find out where to change it to 24 hour clock which we use in Europe so that huh, strange the whole infotainment it just feels quite ancient if you go here if you go to vehicle setting wait for the lag yeah you see holy shit balls you click there and then uh, uh, go back here general settings wait for the lag well well I guess not everyone wants to be modern okay let's test the sound system well it sounds okay except for that it lacks the deep bass this kind of soundtrack so as long as you don't play too loud then it's okay I guess it's not the worst I've heard. Which car was it I tested recently? No, I think it was the Moxus. Yeah, the Moxus was really shit. <laughs> Here you actually have okay sound system. It sounds clear at least. And you can enjoy the stereo sound. And then when it comes to rattling in the doors, uh, skip a little bit. There are no rattling. Okay, maybe a little bit. Okay, a little bit then. Right. But here, it's supposed to be some heavy, uh, some deep bass here. <coughs> Can't hear it. Everything below 100 hertz is non existing. And also, it doesn't play that loud. There, that's maximum. At least there's no clipping. And basically, no distortion either. So. Probably some uh, cheap Temu speakers and amplifier. No, actually, it's Korean. They have their own stuff. Yeah. So, overall, the sound system. I mean, it sounds okay. Yes. Uh, if I'm uh, older file, I'll probably try to add some kind of aftermarket subwoofer. And then it'll sound okay ish. Yeah. So, mm, score maybe 4 out of 10. Uh, let's check the weight front axle wow 1240 only the whole truck oh well that's it 2460 I get the impression this is a small light nimble pickup truck versus the other we are testing and so far 240 watt hour per kilometer, still zero degrees Celsius outside. And then how is Mjösen today? Oh, very little wind. Uh, that's good for driving condition. I'm not sure where, which direction it is. Uh, yeah, it's light from the south it seems like. Alright, this time was 251 watt hour per kilometer. That's not too bad actually. And it's lower than the e 9 again at 10 degrees Celsius. Now it's zero degrees. But uh, I measure that uh, this car under reports distance by 3%. That's massive. It means that actually the consumption is 3% lower. Okay, we are at uh, 31% battery. You can see it there, kind of small, but yeah. So we need to get it down. So this car has preheating on the battery. You just press here. Wait. What? You saw it flash, right? Huh? What? Wait. Don't tell me that it's not working. Oh, oh wait. Um, 
uh, no error, nothing. Uh, I think it it might be hot enough or stay the charge is too low. I don't know what's wrong, but uh, okay, let's proceed. All right, I think we're almost done now. We're down to 11%. Actually, 10.8 here, more accurately. But uh, the battery heated up quite quickly, even with the battery heater off. So, well, I just wonder if you're gonna rapid gate. <laughs> well, we're now at Ionte. I'm gonna do the charging test. But uh, see here, <laughs> since 100% battery, we draw only 216 kilometers, 316 watt hour per kilometer. But um, Car scanner reports 11.1 kilowatt hour left. I wonder if there's some zero buffer, maybe three kilowatt hour below zero. Um, because if we have around 80 kilowatt hour, then we should have only eight kilowatt hour here, right? Okay, battery should be warm enough. Well, let's see, how fast can we charge? All right, it's ramping up. 93 kilowatt. It's supposed to go to 120. Mm, okay, wait, it's ramping up kind of slow. You can see here, battery temperature 23 to 29. Uh, I mean, it refused to preheat. Uh, is it because the state of charge is too low or are we cold gating? I have no idea. We're not getting 120 kilowatt. Maybe min temp needs to be 25 degrees. Wait a minute, it just has really slow ramp up. Wow, it needs to charge 6% in order to hit maximum speed. Oh, we're going, we're going beyond 120 kilowatt. Oh yeah. This is going to be a nice 1000 kilometer challenge. <laughs> Look at that. Wait, are we charging faster than the e -Terra 9? Oh, I don't remember what the speed on that one. I want to check. Look at this. It keeps going. It keeps going. So the the old, um, not, uh, I mean, the or the um, the SUV version, you know, uh, Taurus has a smaller battery and charges at 120 kilowatt. But here we have a bigger battery, still LFP, but wow, it goes faster in spec. Yeah, according to the spec, it's supposed to be 120. But this ain't 120, that's for sure. Come on, keep going, keep going. This the, the slowest ramp up ever. <laughs> Dude, we're about to hit 160 kilowatt now. <laughs> the the Maxus e 9 could hit only 127 uh, kilowatt, and that's roughly 105 kilowatt hour battery. This Musu is charging way faster and is a lot cheaper. Oh, it's game over. Maxus go home. Wait, I think I hit the maximum speed. Oh, <laughs> what, what? What? No, nine. Nine, what the heck is going on here? Shit. Okay, so we had a nice little ra slow ramp up, but then uh, uh, it just plummets. Um, and now it hopefully will stay at 122, right? All the way to what? 60%? 80%? Oh, she, this is going to be one interesting 1000 kilometer challenge. I crunch some numbers and then if we use the 11.1 .1 kilowatt hour, we get 79.5 kilowatt hour net capacity. According to the spec, it's 81. So we have slightly less than spec. So if I base it on 10% remaining, then we get even less. So I, I don't know exactly how much we have here, but uh, based on the consumption and then corrected for 3% under reporting, um, we don't get that good range, but remember that it's cold outside. So if it's 10 or 20 degrees outside, it's going to be better. But, um, you know, this is still a quite affordable uh, pickup truck, an electric pickup truck. And then, okay, it's not as big battery as the e 9, but at least bigger than the Toyota Hilux, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah, so I mean, overall, uh, it's a great car. I mean, it's good comfort, uh, not that noisy. Okay, slightly bouncy, but also not that big. Maybe if you don't want too big pickup truck, then, you know, this is a good choice for you. But uh, I just picked up the car today. Sorry for my noobness. 
and I only spent uh, like four or five hours with this car so far so I need to test more and learn more about how everything works in here but it's similar to the uh, to the Taurus um, I tried yeah but um, still I feel like maybe some of the tech in here is kind of old-ish yeah Okay, whatever. Like, why, why don't we have a, a 5C battery here? Like, it's LFP. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, maybe too much to ask, but I mean, if there's, if there's a, a car segment that needs the 5C 60 battery, it is the pickup trucks because they are in general kind of thirsty. They might be hauling stuff. Yeah, okay. This this uh, pickup truck cannot haul 3.5 tons, unlike the Eater 9. Okay, fine. But yeah, these pickup trucks, they, they need lots of electricity. <laughs> so they would really appreciate uh, like 300, 400, 500 kilowatt charging, right? Yeah, but those, this is only 400 volt architecture, so. Okay, but whatever, I mean, overall, it's still a nice pickup truck so far. So that's gonna be for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.